property markets that drives Jaguar's business in the United States. And so we're very pleased to be able to have the new XJ on the stand here for the full run of the Miami Auto Show or South Florida Auto Show. And the consumers in this market will be the first consumers in the United States to see the full Jaguar lineup in all of its glory. Um, I wanted to uh, make sure everybody saw on the chairs here, we'll hand out also our press kits on the new XJ, but they're also a very important mouse pad. Now, I heard that no one gives out mouse pads anymore. And so we felt it was critically important that your mouses are well taken care of. And on this mouse pad is the um, web addresses of both our media website and our new interactive website for both Jaguar and Land Rover. And so we hope that when you go back to your offices and you throw away that old ratty mouse pad that you have with some other brand's car on it, and you put this one down, you're thinking to yourself, where can I get some information on Jaguar or Land Rover, some interesting videos to see what's going on in the life of our brands, some photographs, see what people are tweeting about, see our Facebook page, any of those things that you might want to see that's a little bit outside the norm of your traditional media uh, materials, you'll check out these websites and get to know us better and get to see what's going on with our brand. So this morning we're going to have a presentation uh, from uh, Mr. Ian Balfour, who is our top dealership sales training person. And Ian goes around the country teaching our people about our products and also teaching them how to explain these products to the consumers as they come in. He also works our consumer events and has probably spent more time talking about the new XJ and getting questions and getting feedback from consumers than anybody in the whole company. And so without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Mr. Ian Balfour, who will introduce this wonderful new car to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. Thanks, everybody. Good morning. Well, wow, what a great opportunity we have today. Um, I have spent a lot of time with the XJ. I've been very honored to travel with this car all across the country, starting with Pebble Beach at the Concord Elegance, where we revealed it in the U.S. for the very first time, and continuing all the way through to just an event at Universal Studios, the other one in California last Saturday night, where we had 1,800 people attend the event. So face-to-face, -face, I've talked with over 2,000 consumers about the new XJ, and uh, we're very delighted to share with you that the response has been virtually over the top on this car. Um, when Ian Callum set out to redo the product lineup for Jaguar just a few years ago, he wanted to return to Sir William Lyon's original design philosophies. That does not mean retro cars. We've done enough cars that look like older Jaguars. It meant modernizing the lineup, starting with XK in 2006, XF last year, and now the brand new 2010 XJ, to go back to the traditional styling cues of fantastic proportions, beautiful lines, wonderful surfaces on the car. And you see the maximum expression of that as I give you a quick walk around of the XJ. Do you want to tell you a little bit about the lineup from a, a product perspective very quickly? Because one of the pieces of feedback we get a lot from consumers is, is that all when we tell them about pricing? So let me just give you a quick overview of the three trim levels and the pricing involved. At 72,500, the entry level XJ is 385 horsepower, 380 pound feet of torque, all aluminum, just a hair over 4,000 pounds with wonderful standard features like 19 inch wheels, adaptive dynamic suspension, paddle shift for those who like manual control over the gears, a very sporting luxury car starting at 72.5. Also available in a long wheelbase version at 79.5. When you move up the ladder to 470 horsepower, that's the, this is the Neiman Marcus version of the XJ Supercharged. 470 horsepower, 424 pound-feet of torque at uh, 79.5, or sorry, at 87.5, $3,000 more for the long wheelbase version. And for those who just have to have it all, the top of the line Super Sport XJ, custom order only. Customer must order their vehicle. It will be personally built for them. 510 horsepower, 461 pound-feet of torque, $112,000, 3,000 more for the long wheelbase version. That vehicle has no optional equipment. Our option list is always very short. We equip the cars very well from the start, but on the Super Sport, every feature that is available on the XJ is standard equipment. So that's a quick tour of the lineup. As I mentioned, this is the Neiman Marcus version, some unique colors that were set up for the 50 cars Neiman Marcus sold last Friday. Let me tell you a little bit about some of the design issues that we were accomplishing with this vehicle. From the front of the vehicle, Mr. Callum wanted to have family familiarity, 
but uniqueness. So you'll see the grill material is the same composite material as is on the XF, but the grill's much more upright, much broader, gives a very aggressive appearance to the front of the vehicle. You'll also note when you look closely, these headlamps are very similar to those on XF, but shortened down a little bit to give a more aggressive appearance, what Mr. Callum calls the raptor's eyes. Those of you who remember Jurassic Park, just when the raptor was about to bite off your head, the eyes squinted down. Wanted that very aggressive look to the front of the vehicle. From the side of the vehicle, the word that he wanted customers to use was sleek. And I can't even describe how many times people looking at the car have said, wow, long and sleek from the side. In fact, I read one magazine review that said it's a full foot longer than the previous XJ. It's actually a full inch longer than the previous XJ. But the lines of the car make it look much longer. That's the proportions of the lines and the surfaces again. Let me share with you a couple of things done to accomplish that. First of all, roof line lowered and shoulder raised to give the daylight opening a sportier, more aggressive appearance. There's a swage line, starts at the front of the vehicle at the light assembly, goes back to this part of the door handle, disappears, reappears on the next door, continues all the way to the back. That disappearance in the middle does two things. It elongates the appearance of the vehicle to the eye, but it also makes it hard to discern the long wheelbase cars from the standard wheelbase cars. So I've had customers literally standing beside the standard wheelbase saying, this is the long one, right? Pointing to the car, and then they point to the long one and say, and that's the, that's the standard wheelbase? It's really hard to discern. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish there. You're used to on XK and XF, a vertical side power vent, but on the XJ, it's a horizontal side power vent. Again, visually emphasizing the length of the vehicle. Even a detail like the door handles. The chrome insert here is elongated. The button used to lock the doors for the standard keyless entry system. Push that button, but it's long and thin, highlighting the length of the car. You'll notice on the Neiman Marcus version, polished 20 inch Kasuga wheels. 20 inch wheels are standard on the supercharged and the super sport trim levels. 19 inch wheels standard on the entry level vehicle with 385 horsepower. Of course, things like adaptive dynamics, always standard with the supercharged motor, active differential in the rear. The active differential pays attention to the grip of the road and the position of the steering wheel so that it knows if you turn hard, the weight's gonna shift to the outside, so we better send some extra power to that outside wheel before it might even spin. So those are standard features on supercharged vehicles. When we look at the rear styling of the vehicle, which you can't see well from here, but we're gonna have you up in a moment to take a look. The goal of the rear side was presence. Since the view you typically see of a car is the rear of the car in front of you as you drive on the road, Mr. Callum wanted as you pull up behind an XJ from a distance to see, wow, that's a substantial vehicle. Tail lights are moved way out to the edges, not wrapping around the side so it doesn't interrupt the flow and the length of the side view, but vertical and very broad. You'll also notice the tail lights, three vertical LED sets. He calls them the cat's claws, as if they were sort of scratched down the back of the vehicle. At nighttime, all you see of the car in front of you is the tail lights, so he wanted a very unique per perspective on that as well. With the broad expanse of body color at the back of the vehicle to give that substance a very prominently displayed leaper, just in case someone wasn't sure, because it's a very different Jaguar than they're used to seeing. Quick tour of some of the features that you'll be looking for inside the vehicle. The goal was contemporary luxury. More leather than any Jaguar ever made. More wood than any Jaguar the last 30 years. But not wood simply as decoration, trimming things that could otherwise be some other material. Wood is visual structure in the car. So if you were to climb into a 30-foot mahogany polished launch, a boat, like a Riva boat, and you're surrounded by wood, you wouldn't look and say, gee, that's nice trim, you would be surrounded by the boat. When you get into XJ, you'll notice that the wood trim begins at the back of the, uh, the rear door and in a wide expanse goes all the way through both doors, wraps around to the front point and comes together in front of our lower dash, two inches lower than the previous XJ to increase the spaciousness of the vehicle inside. There's something called the intaglio, a little badge where the wood comes together up front, says Jaguar on the XJ typically. Customers can have that, say whatever they would like. They can order a custom brand in that vehicle. This one, of course, says Neiman Marcus, one of 50. So that's a nice little touch. We have a new interface between the driver and the occupants and the technology of the car. It's called Intuitive Technology for short iTech. Intuitive Technology starts with a 12.3 inch thin film transistor display. It's kind of like the Boeing business jet you bought last year, the $45 million plane. You all have one of those, do you not? 
Jake's got the all-glass cockpit, right? You knew about that. And the reason for that glass cockpit is instead of hundreds of gauges, whatever's important to the pilot at this second is what displays in front of them. That's how our thin film transistor display works. So you always, of course, have a speedometer. To the right is the tachometer. To the left is temperature and fuel. However, if something should happen, like picking up a nail in a tire, and the tire starts to lose pressure, of course we have standard tire pressure monitoring, but instead of a little icon lighting up, and hopefully you know what that picture means, the tachometer goes away, and you get a display this large that says, you have a tire pressure problem with a picture, an icon, or a graphic of the tire, and the words in any language we need it to say anywhere in the world. You can't do that with traditional gauges. So the thin film transistor display is getting a lot of positive feedback. We also have a high definition 8 inch touch screen for the obvious things of telephone, Bluetooth interface, of course standard, the climate control system, the audio system, and the navigation system, all standard equipment. For those interested in the audio side of things, the entry level audio system on XJ is only 600 watts, 14 speakers. There are people who want more, so on supercharged and super sport, standard equipment is 1200 watt custom Bowers and Wilkins system with 20 speakers, two subwoofers, two door woofers. It's going to make a lot of people very happy. For those who aren't buying supercharged and super sport, who can survive only having 385 horsepower, they'll be very happy if they wish to add the Bowers and Wilkins system because, of course, it's available. It's not held for the people who only buy the higher end vehicles. If the car is equipped by the consumer's choice with rear entertainment, of course, Super Sport has rear entertainment standard because nothing's optional on Super Sport. They choose the rear entertainment system. We have two high definition eight inch monitors on the rear on the headrest for the rear passengers to watch, but a unique interface never done in a car before called white fire headphones. Those of you who've been on a plane watching a movie, which is almost everybody here, know that you would probably tune into channel one to listen to the audio track of the movie. But if you've seen the movie a couple of times, not interested, you would dial maybe channel 5 for jazz or channel 6 for the uh, easy listening station. Well, in a Jaguar XJ with rear entertainment, you have white fire headphones that have a dial on them to pick which audio channel you want to tune into. If you have five-year-old Susie sitting on the left-hand side enthralled with SpongeBob SquarePants, her 12-year-old brother sitting on the right-hand side wants nothing to do with SpongeBob. So he plugs in a memory stick with MP3 files he's recorded. He probably showed his mom and dad how to do that. He plugs that in, tunes in a different channel on his headphones, and listens to his recorded music. On any other car, he'd have to have brought along his own headphones. In an XJ with rear entertainment, that's standard equipment. So we've tried our very best to give the consumer the things that, we, that they want. They want contemporary luxury, not old, old, but modern looking luxury. They want outstanding performance. We give them that with three choices of motors and trim levels to match. And we try to make this the experience at the dealership that they're going to be thrilled to have bought a Jaguar. We'd love to invite you to have a chance to come on up and take a look in more detail at the car. I, along with Stuart or any of the Jaguar folks here, would be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me to learn about the new XJ.